After seeing Alien Covenant, you probably have some questions. That's okay. Like Prometheus before it, Alien Covenant was long on terror and short on answers. As such, we're here to do our best to get to the bottom of some of these mysteries and try to figure out just what the takeaway is from Ridley Scott's latest extraterrestrial murder fest. So now, with a very obvious spoiler warning, let's try to explain the ending of Alien Covenant. Why did David help Daniels in Tennessee? If you were surprised when the synthetic at the end of the movie turned out to be the evil British David and not the kind, bland Walter, then you haven't seen a lot of movies, have you? The minute you see Michael Fassbender playing two robots, one good, one evil, you have to know that the bad one's gonna pull the old dipsy doo switcheroo on our heroes by the end of the movie. It's basically movie law. However, even if the David reveal was somewhat predictable, it does raise the question. Why did David help Daniels in Tennessee during the final showdown with the Xenomorph? It's not completely clear, but it seems likely that David suffered from a planet-sized case of hubris. His whole plan seems to center around finding ways to make the Xenomorph better through experimentation. We got a glimpse of some of his trials and errors when we saw his lab, along with what remained of Elizabeth Shaw from Prometheus. It's possible that the final showdown aboard the Covenant was, for David, a test to see whether this version of the Xenomorph could get the better of Daniels in Tennessee. It failed, so he's got plans for bigger, badder aliens when the ship finally arrives at Aura J6. On the other hand, maybe he simply saw something in Daniels that he wanted to preserve. Again, so he could use her in his future experiments. Who's Mommy? At one point, David says that his alien pals are waiting for Mother. There are plenty of ways to interpret this line. A pretty obvious reading is that the alien eggs, and more specifically, the facehuggers within, need a host to do the bloody and nasty with. In essence, anyone who provides an incubation chamber for a xenomorph is Mother. But what if there's more to it than that? Prometheus and Alien Covenant are prequels to the original Alien franchise, and that includes Aliens, which was written and directed by James Cameron. In that movie, we learn the source of all those lovely alien eggs, the Alien Queen. Since we didn't get to see anything resembling a Xenomorph Queen before leaving the Engineer's planet, it's likely that it hasn't been created yet. David can't stay up forever making new eggs, so the Queen's creation has to be on David's agenda. And that may spell a pretty bad morning for our hero Daniels when she wakes up. What did it all mean? It may be tough to decipher, but it sure seems like Ridley Scout was trying to tell us something with this tale of space colonization gone horribly awry. Well, let's think about this. Daniels and her poor, dead husband Jacob came aboard the Covenant with hopes of starting a new life on a new planet, just because it's an adventure. Meanwhile, poor, dead Captain Christopher decided to stop on the Engineer's planet in response to the weird communication they picked up, and to see if this new world might be even better than the one they'd been going towards already. And David decided that he should play God and outcreate his creators. What was the result of all these decisions? Chaos, destruction, and death. More than anything, Alien Covenant is about the dangers of unchecked human ambition. If Daniels and her fella had just stayed on Earth and rented a nice apartment somewhere, he probably wouldn't have been burnt to a crisp in a hypersync pod. And if Christopher hadn't diverted away from Aura J6, well then, we'd have a movie about the dangers of micromanaging a group of drunk spaceship workers. But there probably would have been far fewer blood barfs and body bursts. And if David hadn't decided to go full-on supervillain, well, then he wouldn't have inadvertently become Came that which he despised. What happens next? Two months before Alien Covenant's May 2017 release, the Sydney Morning Herald reported on a set visit with director Ridley Scott. In that article, Scott revealed that he's already got the next movie in the prequel series written and ready to go. That means that the dangling plot threads of what'll happen when the Covenant arrives at Orj 6 will be answered in whatever treatment Scott's got locked in his desk drawer. Presumably, we'll see a whole mess of xenomorphs bursting out of colonists, not to mention a final showdown with David and Daniels, or whoever else signs on for a sequel if and when 20th Century Fox announces it's happening. What happens when the prequels are over? Not only has Scott got the sequel to Covenant ready to go, The Hollywood Reporter said that Scott's revealed plans to make yet another movie in this prequel series. That fourth movie would apparently link up with the events of the first Alien movie from 1979. And then, no more Alien movies ever, right? Well, the entire reason we're talking about new Alien movies right now at all is that franchises tend to go for as long as people can earn money from them. Whatever your opinion on the current crop of Alien flicks, making new movies in a recognizable series of movies is a sure way to earn cash. So even though these prequels will have to lead into the original movies somehow, there will likely be some effort to keep the brand alive. That means sequels that pick up after the events of Alien Resurrection, or, God help us, Alien vs. Predator. It might also mean that we're only a few short years away from Alien Reboot. Don't say it can never happen. Hollywood rebooted Robocop, Spider-Man, Evil Dead, and plenty more. There's no reason that Alien won't be reborn soon enough too. After all, getting born and reborn is kind of what aliens do. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.